Hey, what's up? This is a continuation of the last video where I uh, talked about the false position method and introduced it. In this video here, I wanted to actually do a concrete example and go through the procedure. And uh, let's get started. Okay, so we want to approximate the root of f of x equals x cubed to minus 5. And here we're told that xl equals negative 5 and xu equals 5. So that's our range, and we want to perform three iterations to calculate our xr value. So we have a handy table here, and we can start to fill in some values. So we have our lower limit of negative 5, upper limit of 5, and we need to calculate our xr value. And so we can do that with our general formula, xr equals xu minus f of xu, xl minus xu, all over f of xl, xu. Okay, and we simply plug in the values we have, but I'll reiterate it one more time. Oh, excuse me. Okay. And here, you simply uh, plug in the values, the appropriate values into the function x cubed to minus 5, and you'll get 5 minus 120 minus negative 10 over negative 130 minus 20, and we get an xr value of 0 0.2 for our first iteration. That in. And then we have to do the positive negative test of the product of the function evaluated at the lower limit and the function evaluated at xr. All right, so that is equal to. Negative one thirty times negative four point nine nine two, which gives us a positive value telling us to search right and XR is set to new XL value or the lower limit. So we could fill that in. So we filled out XR equals zero point two. And now this is positive. All right. And then we could start to fill in this next portion here. So we said XR is now our new lower limit. So 0 0.2, and the upper limit remains unchanged. And now we need to calculate the XR value here. So let's get a separate sheet of paper and let's do that. So yeah, you can see we already went through one page. So this is pretty tedious and repetitive. I think they part of the reason uh, you take these courses is they really want you to be thankful for all the work that your calculators are doing. So hopefully you uh, see that uh, appreciation. All right, so the positive sign told us that XL is 0 0.2 and X upper is 5. All right, so I'll rewrite the equation one more time to calculate XR. It's XU minus F of XU times XL minus XU all over 
f of x o minus f of x u and we substitute the appropriate values minus That should be right. Okay. Moving on. And then we simply uh, plug these values into the equation x cubed minus 5 and simplify it a little bit. And after that, I get 0 0.3917 for our XR value. So our second approximation all right, and then we need to do the test of the product, whether it's positive or negative. So F of 0 0.2 multiplied by 0.3917. Let's see what we get. So you will end up getting two negative values and a product, and the product will be positive. All right, and then now we can fill these. Uh, so that also tells us to search right. So XR once again will be new XL value. So we can uh, fill in our chart. So we got 0 0.3917 and the product was positive. And then this tells us how to set our new range for the next iteration. So XR becomes the lower limit. And the upper limit remains unchanged. And now we need to calculate our final XR value and also determine the sign to complete this table. One more piece of paper and we should be done. Okay. So we have our lower limit, 3917, and our upper limit as 5. Let's proceed to calculate the XR value. So I'm not going to write down the generic formula. Hopefully you uh, got that down or have it accessible to you. So substituting the appropriate values gives us this. Divided by maybe 4.9399 minus 1 shunny. Simplifying this gives us our third and final XR approximation value of 0 0.5739 and then you'll test f of xl times f of xr you'll get two negative values and the product will be positive so we can fill in our chart completely Zero point five. 739 is the third XR value, and we also got a positive value telling us once again to search right. So, if we were to do another iteration, 
this uh, XR value of 0 0.5739 would be the lower limit, and then the upper limit would be 5. So somewhere in between there. And let's also take a look at the, at the graph of this equation. Okay. Here we go. So our equation is f of x equals x cubed minus 5. And uh, originally, if you'll recall, our lower limit was negative 5. And the upper limit was 5. And the xr value was 0 0.2 for the very first iteration. And that's shown here. Well, the way that was done, um, if you remember, it's the function evaluated at the lower limit and the upper limit, and you basically draw a line between there and where that line uh, crosses the x-axis, that is your xr value. So that point right here, x equals 0 0.2, and then that was set to our new lower limit, and then the upper limit was unchanged. So this is our new search range. And then the, now the straight, the diagonal line was drawn here. And then you can see this gets us slightly closer. So we went from 0.2 to 0 0.3917, that's that point there. And then with the next iteration, we got slightly closer. Oh, 0 0.5739. So those were the, the values for our first, second, and third iteration. One, two, three. I know this is getting really messy, but uh, bear with me just to see the point. So with each iteration, we're getting closer to the actual root, which is located right here. And that is the x value of 1.7010. All right. And then if we were to proceed with uh, four, fifth, sixth, continuing the iterations, we would eventually approach this. Uh, number and it'll be different for each case for this example it slowly inched forward to the right by very small amounts but that was just for uh, this example um, but yeah overall I hope this was helpful and uh, you're able to visualize the concepts and understand the uh, procedure uh, for the false position method uh, thanks for watching